Next, coming to the physiology of bile cell formation and secretion. So, approximately around 1.5 liters of bile is secreted daily. So, questions might be asked on this. Next, coming to the physiology of bile cell formation and secretion. So, approximately around 1.5 liters of bile is secreted daily. So, questions might be asked on this. So, it is around 1 to 1.5 liters. So, different textbooks give it differently. So, on an average, take it to around, around 1.2 to 1.5 liters. So, around 80 percent of this is secreted by the hepatocytes into the canaliculi. So, once bile reaches the canaliculi, a lot of reabsorption and secretions can also happen through the canaliculus. So, the epithelial cells of the biliary tree uh, tract can actively reabsorb secrete water and electrolytes. So, secretion is generally through a chloride channel activated by secretin. So, whenever food reaches the duodenum, whenever the chyme reaches the duodenum, secretin is activated and secretin causes further increase in secretion of the water and electrolytes through the biliary canaliculus and it starts changing the content of the bile. So, ultimately bile becomes enriched with bicarbonate ions. And this accounts to around 20 percent of the biliary secretion. So, if we have bile in the common bile duct, around 80 percent of it has come from the hepatocytes and around 20 percent from the biliary canaliculi. To remember uh, the uh, concentration of the hepatic bile, of the sodium is important, of potassium is important, of the bile uh, salts important and once protein has also been asked. The concentration of protein in the bile has asked for. So, this is a diagram from Savistan. Try to remember the input, at least these four. So, then comes the question about the difference in the hepatic bile and the gallbladder bile. So, as we all know, bile is concentrated in the gallbladder also and also it is acidified in the gallbladder. So, only not, as we all know, as the bile from the liver moves into the gallbladder, uh, some amount of absorb, reabsorption of water happens and concentration of almost all the uh, solutes which are present in the bile increases except for two, that is for the chloride and the bicarbonate. Again, a question has also been asked on this. So, try to remember three things increase in the hepatic bile as compared to in the gallbladder bile because water is getting absorbed in the uh, gallbladder. So, obviously, the concentration of all the solutes will increase except for three. One is the chloride, one is the bicarbonate and another is the pH. So, bile is basically acidic and the bile in the liver is alkaline. So, uh, if you take the hepatic bile and compare it with the gallbladder bile, pH will be more chloride will be more and bicarbonate will be more. Remember this, this is actually important. As can be seen, pH is more in the hepatic bile, bicarbonate is also more and chloride is also more. So, chloride is more, bicarbonate is more, not mentioned the pH. So, pH is as, as you all know, the hepatic bile is alkaline and the gallbladder bile is acidic. So, then comes the regulation of the biliary secretion. So, how is biliary secretion actually happening? So, initially we have the parasympathetic impulse that stimulates the production of bile from the liver. So, and we also have the fatty acids and the amino acids that enter the uh, duodenum, the kind that is released and it causes the release of secretin and cholecystokinin. So, it stimulates the secretion of secretin into the blood. So, whenever uh, CCK, CCK causes contraction of the gallbladder and release of bile, secretin enhances the flow of bile which is rich in bicarbonate from the liver by majorly stimulating the cholangiocytes also. So, vagal stimulation has caused an increase in the biliary secretion while the splanchnic sympathetic nerve stimulation results in decreased bile flow. So, the gastro most important gastrointestinal hormone that causes and increases the secretin. So, it basically increases the concentration of chloride rich fluid and also the bicarbonate rich fluid that is secreted uh, via the cholangiocytes. So, secretin release is stimulated by the hydrochloric acid, proteins and fatty acids in the duodenum that constitutes the chyme. So, the bile ductular secretion is also stimulated by cholecystokinin also, gastrin and other hormones. So, the bile duct epithelium is also capable of water and electrolyte absorption, which is of prime importance in the storage of bile during fasting in patients who have previously undergone cholecystectomy. So, whenever a patient undergoes cholecystectomy, so the biliary epithelium uh, adapt to it by uh, doing the function what gallbladder used to do that is absorption of electrolytes and the water and increase the concentration of the solutes in the bile. So, then comes the concept of enterohepatic circulation. So, what is exactly is enterohepatic circulation is major is, is of prime importance is to conserve as, a, as much amount of bile acids which are secreted as possible. So, we have the cholesterol that entering the liver. So, that forms the bile acid secreted 
helps in the absorption of fat fat absorption so they are of utmost importance in the absorption of fat because they emulsify the fat and help in its absorption so once the fat is absorbed the bile acids go from the proximal small intestine to the ileum where it is absorbed against the concentration gradient then goes to the portal vein and then comes back to the liver so basically why is bile acid being reabsorbed is that the formation of the bile acid is difficult so it requires a lot of atp that's why body has defined has developed a mechanism to conserve as much of bile acids as possible through this intrahepatic circulation again this is an an important slide and some questions have been asked based on the numbers so amount of bile that is produced is very very important so around 0.6 grams per 24 hours so this amount is the newly synthesized bile and around 2 to 4 grams of bile acid goes through the pool so approximately for around 6 to 10 times per day so as we have already discussed so that goes through the it gets secreted into the small bowel reabsorption portal vein and gets returned so around 0.6 grams of uh, bile is lost in the feces every day and around 0.6 is uh, generated every day 0.6 grams of bile acids for 24 hours so to put it in a nutshell the liver is responsible for biotransformation of many endogenous and exogenous substances so basic uh, for many substances it is the detoxification that the liver uh, liver forms and converts uh, lipid soluble into water soluble uh, uh, end products and secretes them secretes them so produce uh, there are two general mechanisms by which liver accomplishes this biotransformation one is through the oxidation reduction and hydrolysis and the second one is through the conjugation process so, so cytochrome p450 enzymatic system is the most important one that catalyzes the phase one reaction the second uh, reaction involves an array of enzymes wherein conjugation process is accomplished so basically in phase 2 many of the hydrophobic substances are con converted into hydrophilic substances and then they are eliminated through bile or urine also liver is the principal site of conversion of ammonia to urea via the urea cycle which is a separate process so basically ammonia is converted to urea which is water soluble and can be easily excreted in the urine